Cisco's proprietary version of Spanning Tree Protocol per VLAN Spanning Tree Plus gives you immense flexibility control over your Spanning Tree topologies. Now remember, per VLAN Spanning Tree Plus was invented to give you a different instance of Spanning Tree Protocol for each and every single VLAN. However, by default, every single Spanning Tree instance is going to be the exact same. Every single VLAN is going to have the same root bridge. Every switch is going to have the same designated ports and root ports and block ports because they're all making their decisions based on the same information. However, what if you change some of that information? For example, instead of having all the devices using switch A as their root bridge, or pardon me, all the VLANs, instead of having all the VLANs using the same switch as their root bridge, what if you state that switch B is going to be the root for VLAN 2? By doing so, you change the way the topology is built by Spanning Tree Protocol. And when you change the way the topology is built by Spanning Tree Protocol, you can achieve load balancing. So instead of having all the traffic flow in the same direction using all the same links in the topology, you can now utilize other links. So instead of blocking ports on a physical port by port basis, when we're dealing with per VLAN spanning tree plus, we're blocking on a logical VLAN by VLAN basis instead. So if you examine this topology now, notice how VLAN 1 traffic will successfully be sent over this trunk link. VLAN 2 traffic though goes up this trunk link. We're load balancing. So VLAN 1 traffic goes that way, VLAN 2 traffic goes that way, and as a result, we are utilizing our links. We're not blocking links completely on a physical basis. No, we're blocking them on a logical VLAN by VLAN basis in the topology. So how is this accomplished? How do the switches know which BPDU is for which VLAN now? How do they know how to build the topology? How do they not get BPDUs confused? Because there's going to be a separate BPDU sent out of every single interface for every single spanning tree instance that is a tied, that is tied to a VLAN. So therefore, we need a way to identify the VLAN in the BPDU. And how is that accomplished? It's accomplished by modifying the bridge ID. Here's the traditional bridge ID made up of a 16-bit bridge priority, which defaults to what? 32,768 and a 48-bit MAC address that will be used as a tiebreaker. Now, with the newer bridge ID for per VLAN spanning tree plus, we have a 4-bit bridge priority and a 12-bit extended system ID and a 48-bit MAC address. So they've simply taken the bridge priority, the original traditional bridge priority, and broken it up into a 4-bit field and a 12-bit field, but combined, let me repeat that, combined, they still equal 16 bits, which is the bridge priority. So combined, they make up the bridge priority. So what is the extended system ID? It is the VLAN number. That's all it is, the VLAN number. So what if you had VLAN 11? And the bridge priority was the default, 32,768. Add them together, and that's your new bridge priority, which would equal 32,779. 
What if the bridge priority was zero? And the ex extended system ID was for VLAN 20. Zero plus 20 equals a bridge priority of 20. There's a downside to this, though. And the downside is that in the olden days, or with traditional spanning tree protocol, you could increment your bridge priority by one value. So if you didn't want to use 32,768, you could say, well, I want to use 32,766. That's perfectly acceptable. But nowadays, you can't do that. Anytime you change a bridge priority, it has to be in increments of 4,096. Increments of 4,096. 